on February 1, 2003, the space shuttle Columbia on mission STS-107 was returning to Earth after a successful 16-day mission in space. The crew consisting of seven astronauts from different parts of the world, including Kalpana Chawla, were excited to reunite with their families. The shuttle made its usual landing approach to the Kennedy Space Center. However, just before 9 am, abnormal readings showed up at mission control. Temperature readings from sensors located on the left wing were lost. Tire pressure readings from the left side of the shuttle also vanished. The spacecraft communicator called up to Columbia to discuss the tire pressure readings. At 8 hour 59 minutes and 32 seconds, Mr. Husband, the mission commander, called back from Columbia. He said, Roger, followed by a word that was cut off in mid-sentence. A prolonged silence loomed in the mission control center. Columbia Space Shuttle was destined to land near Kennedy Space Center. But something disastrous happened that changed the destiny of Kalpana Chawla and six other crew members forever. Hey folks, this is Shaz and watch this video. 38 miles above ground, the space shuttle had exploded. These were the parts of Columbia Space Shuttle after it exploded 60 km above the Earth's surface while re-entering the Earth's atmosphere. At around 9 am, the parts of Columbia Space Shuttle started falling on southern Texas and southern Louisiana. Somewhere between this were the remains of seven astronauts. Mission Commander Rick Husband, Pilot William McCool, Payload Specialist Ilan Ramon, the first Israeli astronaut, Payload Commander Michael Anderson, Mission Specialist David Brown, Laurel Clark and our India's pride Dr. Kalpana Chawla. On 17th March 1962, Kalpana was born in Colonel District of India. She was the youngest of four children. Her parents called her Montu. Surprisingly, until she went to school, she didn't have an official name. For her admission purpose, she was supposed to choose herself a name and she chose Kalpana. Kalpana, that means imagination. Kalpana was a very ambitious child. One day, while standing on her terrace, she saw a plane fly by and she decided to become a pilot. Later on in her life, she not only becomes a pilot, but also a level up than a pilot, that is, an astronaut. Yes, Kalpana holds Certified Flight Instructor's License and Commercial Pilot's License for single and multi-engine land airplanes and single engine seaplanes, instrument rating and private glider. She completed her bachelor's degree in aeronautical engineering from Punjab Engineering College. Then she completed her master's degree from the University of Texas, USA. Her folks were not very happy with the decision Kalpana made, the decision to study abroad. Because I lived in India in a very small town and um, forget about space, I didn't even know if my folks were going to let me go to the engineering college. Moving forward in her life, in the year 1998, she also achieves a PhD in aerospace engineering from University of Colorado. After her PhD, in the same year, she began working at NASA's Ames Research Center. This is where she worked on computational fluid dynamics. Basically, she studied how the air flows like fluid around the airplane when an airplane flies. Kalpana is an inspiration for many Indian women. It wasn't until I saw Dr. Chawla and her career um, that it really resonated with me that that's something I could do. And it was simply because I saw somebody I shared an identity with. Even today you see, in Haryana side, male children are more preferred than a female. Imagine the time of 1960s and 1970s. Even after her parents and many other people being opposed to her life decisions, Kalpana achieved a lot in a very young age. In the year 1991, Kalpana becomes an American citizen. And in 1994, NASA selected her and 19 other people from a group of 4,000 other applicants to its astronaut program. On November 19, 1997, she becomes the first person of Indian origin to fly in an American space shuttle. 
and also the first South Asian American woman. She was assigned to the Space Shuttle Columbia flight STS-87 as a mission specialist and prime robotic arm operator. STS means Space Transportation System. In this mission, Kalpana with six other crew members orbits Earth 252 times and stays for 15 days in space. This mission was successful and now Kalpana was ready for a new space mission. Even that time's Indian Prime Minister Inder Kumar Gujral congratulated her for her achievements. Kalpana, we are proud of you. Each one of us in India is proud of us. Proud of a person like you who has done such a pioneering work. And particularly the women and youth of India take great deal of pride in seeing what you have done in the space. My hearty congratulations. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. STS program was the fourth program in which humans were sent to space. First was Project Mercury, second Project Gemini, third was the most famous one Project Apollo and then the STS program. It was the longest human space flight program in history. Its goal was to reuse the same space shuttle multiple times rather than building a new one every single time. The Columbia Space Shuttle completed 27 successful missions before the blast in which Kalpana Chawla and other crew members sadly died. So what exactly happened here? What caused the blast? On January 16, 2003, at 10.30 am, Kalpana launches on board Space Shuttle Columbia for last time, once more as a part of STS-107. This mission was originally scheduled to launch on 11 Jan 2001 but it was delayed 13 times. Finally, it was launched from the Kennedy Space Center. As I said in the beginning of this video, there were 7 crew members on this flight and one of them was Kalpana Chawla. During this 16-day mission, the crew performed over 80 scientific experiments from which Kalpana was overseeing and conducting microgravity experiments on crystal growth, combustion and fire suppression as well as prostate cancer. In this mission, a company called SpaceHab collaborated with NASA with the help of which universities, companies and government agencies all over the world could conduct their research in space without going to space themselves. It meant that these astronauts were doing experiments on their behalf. In fact, children from six schools in Australia, China, Israel, Japan and the USA were chosen who wanted to have these astronauts run their experiments. Spiders, silkworm, organic crystals, fish, bees and ants. How do they react in space? Children wanted to know this. So experiments were being conducted on it by these seven astronauts. An interesting thing about flowers was discovered in these experiments. The smell of these flowers on Earth changes in space. Even during the mission, the data was constantly being transmitted to Earth. Approximately 30% of the data from these experiments was saved, collected and kept in the ground stations. Some videos of the successful experiments were recorded which were then sent back to the children like the ones about ants and crystals. However, there were more than 40 experiments from which we were not able to retrieve any data due to the accident. The major question that still looms here is, what was the reason behind this accident? Did the pilot make some mistake or did some other crew member made some hasty decisions? Was it the fault of an astronaut? Well, the truth to be told, none of the seven astronauts in Columbia Space Shuttle make any mistake. And even before the accident, none of them had any idea about what was going to happen. Watch this video, it was recorded before the launch of Columbia Space Shuttle they noticed a detail. 81.9 seconds after liftoff, something seemed to break off the external tank, hit the shuttle and end up as dust. The thing that broke here was a piece of insulation foam on space shuttle. It broke off and hit the shuttle. It hit so hard that it caused a severe damage to the wing of the space shuttle. NASA knew this happened but they were not worried about it as prior to this, such damages has happened and they didn't cause any problem. The mission continued in space. Columbia, how are you doing over there? We're doing great. We're so glad to see you guys made it into orbit. Yeah, we're glad to be here too. Everybody... At 8.44 am, when it was time for the space shuttle to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, a 1600 degree Celsius fireball was generated at the edges of the wings of the Columbia Space Shuttle. 
At 8:54, everything changed dramatically. An engineer warns the flight director of several problematic messages. The heat from outside of the space shuttle now went in through the hole that was caused during the launch. However, just before 9 a.m., abnormal readings showed up at mission control. Temperature readings from sensors located on left wing were lost. Tire pressure readings from the left side of the shuttle was also vanished. The spacecraft communicator called up to Columbia to discuss the tire pressure readings and at 8 hour 59th minute 32 seconds, Mr. Husband, the mission commander, called back from Columbia. He said, Roger, followed by a word that was cut off in mid-sentence. And then the Columbia space shuttle was broken down into parts due to the heat entering inside it. Due to a small piece of an insulation foam, seven people lost their life. The 2003 report of CAIB, that is Columbia Accident Investigation Board, showed that such foam strikes regularly happen in space shuttle launches. The photos from the launch of 79 missions that were available showed that such foam strikes had been seen in 65 missions before. These kind of foam strikes were very common. But the problematic part about this foam strike was that this piece hit the wrong place at the wrong time. Five years after the accident, another report was published in December 2008, the Columbia Crew Survival Investigation Report. This showed that due to the disruption of cabin pressure, the astronaut passed away within a few seconds. When the Columbia Space Shuttle was disintegrating violently, they did not have to suffer any heat or damage. Lastly, I'd like to say, Kalpana Chawla is a great role model for many Indian women to look up to as to how a little girl from Haryana was able to achieve the things Kalpana achieved. She showed us how one can dream limitlessly and put in great efforts to achieve it. Kalpana Chawla was, is and will always be a great pride to our nation. If you enjoyed watching this video, drop a like and make sure you subscribe because it will help us to bring more such amazing content for you.